Welcome to The Lumber Word, where industry veterans Matt Beamer, Greg Riley, and Ashley Buckholt dissect the world of commodity lumber each week. We bring you up-to-date insights on supply, demand, and market trends, sharing our trading expertise to benefit everyone in the supply chain. Join us for informative and entertaining discussions that guarantee to make you wiser about all things lumber. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of The Lumber Word. It's episode episode number 90, uh, also being recorded on the 28th of August, 2024. Looking forward to it. Welcome back, Matt. Uh, you said you were down in uh, Phoenix? Yeah, it's a little warm down there, buddy. No, it was warm here in Chicago. It's like 100 degrees <laughs> the last couple of days. That's hot. Yeah, but it's a dry heat. Not yeah. here, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't dry here. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd like to give a shout out to Justin at Boise who sent us a nice note. New listener. Says he likes listening to it. Says one of his favorite things is our Merry Date dump segment, which is pretty cool. We'd like to hear that. And Greg, uh, Tara said, uh, nice job. You were right about the rail strike. And I like shook my head. I'm like, do you, you listen? Do you listen to our podcast? <laughs> and Mindy's like, Tara listens to it every week. Hey, well, and you know, like, let's shout, let's shout out to Tara. I, you know, I appreciate her, you know, being part of, you know, the people that will one day help the lumber word get the same kind of money that Kelsey and Kelsey are getting. You know, when I saw that hundred million, <laughs> I went, wow. I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I'm saying it's like, I mean, we're, we could be more interesting than those guys. I mean, none of us are dating Taylor Swift. So that's a negative. Oh, you're going to have to update me on this. What is Kelsey and Kelsey? Kelsey, uh, Travis Kelsey and yeah. Jason Tra- Chelsea of uh, <clears throat> football players talk football. Okay. And, you know, other stuff in like oh, dating Taylor Swift. Gotcha. And- yeah. So maybe to, maybe we got to get some more interesting or do it with uh get some more get some get some well I got to we got to be careful there. But all right. So yeah. anyway, let's yeah, um Exactly. Let's, exactly. Let's go into the uh let's go a little bit into the market and I started talking about what's going on. So I mean here the market still feels good to me. Got a call from a guy last night, won't mention his name. He goes, "Ah, this 4 inch market might fall 40 to 50 dollars in the next 3 weeks." I'm like, "Oh, what do you think about six inch? Oh, that's going to stay strong. I'm like, okay. I've seen people taking shorts. I mean, we quoted one of the same jobs, 20 or 30 trucks out in the Northeast, five times, saw it from three different people. Just heard the guy booked it at print for, I don't know, what did he say? Four weeks, four weeks delivery or something like that. So about $30 under the current cash price. I've seen a bunch of that going on. Well, and then you just hung up. You just had the guy, you know, asking you for a truck delivered again. And you said like next week and, you know, you go, no, I need it this week. And you really, and you realized that it was Wednesday afternoon. Yeah. I mean, the guy's like, I quoted him, like, I can't do it this week, but I can do it next week. And this is a large operation in the area. And he's like, no, I need it like by tomorrow. Like this, and this is a regular type of item, a two by four, 16 footer. So I can tell you, Greg, how busy have where we last month and this month to date so far on trucks? Uh, July was the busiest month that I can ever remember having busier, busier on a volume standpoint than even during COVID. I mean, COVID was a time where as a trader, Matt, and you'll, you'll appreciate this. I liken trading in COVID to being an Indy car driver. You came in every day and you had G force and you were gripping the wheel because Stuff was happening so fast. That's an F one um, driver. That's a it was F one driver. Okay, F one. Yeah, I mean that's 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 even better. Yeah, yeah. those guys are way cooler than indie drivers. You're right. Absolutely. No disrespect to the indie drivers that listen to the show. No, they have a good they have a good uh, weekly TV show out too. Yeah, yeah, that, that is good. I like that. <laughs> Rubbin's racing, baby. <laughs> so, so yeah, I just. I thought I heard you mention one of the biggest volume months we had for trucks. And it's like, look, at, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop also, right? But like we said, we we're trying to figure out who said it. Like, it's got to stop going up before it can go down. I mean, 
we're continuing to move four inch trucks, everything. The other guy, thing guy in Florida was telling everybody he's buying trucks at two and better, 10 footers at 495 to 500. We were selling 535 to 555 down there delivered for, for two and a half, three weeks. Right. So I'm starting to see everybody wants this thing to go down. Right. Um, I'm going to go out and limb and say that's not going to happen for the next three or four weeks. We're probably going to consolidate here for a bit and move higher again. That's my own feeling on it. You know, Spruce, the other interesting thing, Matt, I'll just throw this out there. Everybody's saying, hey, did you see that big list from the mill? Hey, did you see that mill put a lot of wood on the ground in U.S. reloads? And like, yeah, that's not really much in the big picture of consumption in North America. That can all be gone in a day or two. But maybe there is extra stuff be around. And Matt and Greg, what do you what do you think in here? I think there's plenty of two before, you know, two before lumber, whether it's green or dry, it just seems like it's available. But it is also up like, you know, 80 to 100 bucks from the very lows of mid-July. So even the the ugly duckling is still getting some better attention. The two to six and wider side of the coin is is tough to cover. A lot of the inquiries are out there. It's hard to buy. It's hard to ship anytime within, say, two to three weeks. And uh, that's another item that the Europeans don't really bring a lot of over here. So I don't know. I just feel like if anyone wants the market to go down, they're, they're just sort of speaking their position. The market, I thought last week was in the fourth or fifth inning. I, I don't really see anything different this week. I've got guys asking me to change rail cars into trucks. It's going to cost an extra $50, a thousand to ship trucks, but they want me to do it. What does that tell you? And, and they're willing to pay the extra 50 bucks. And they're already paying uh, 80 bucks higher than, than what I sold for a month ago, month and a half ago. Do you know why that is, Matt? It's I do know why, but you're going to tell me. to run out. Price is not as important as running right. out. Number one job, do not run I, out. Don't I run think out. that um, there's going to be some disruption in the CNCP system, even though they told the, the workers to go back to work. It's still going to be slower than normal. That's just what happens when you have disgruntled workers. They just work half days or they call in sick or whatever. And so if you're, if you're looking. That happens on our trading floor too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go take my 30-minute mandated piss break. Yeah, right. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> I mean, I was just happy when Ash got in at 1030 on Monday. You know, yeah. he got yeah. me into that guy. It happens. It's like. Hey, my workout got switched from six to eight. And you know, I mean, I was like on Monday morning, really? Come on, man. <laughs> He's paying a lot of money for those workouts. It's it's probably it's probably the math works on that. I don't know. I, got, I, I got, just feel I, like the market, like uh the market is is solid overall. And I don't know, I, I guess if I'm going to start judging the market, I would wait until after Labor Day. That's my thought. Here's my big, this is my question. If, and if I look back and, and I say, so like, as, as I said, we were busy, you know, June and July. I mean, like there was volume happened, grid liquidity. I mean, we were losing money, but you know, we weren't losing a lot of money, but, and we were, you were keeping stuff turning, trying to figure out what the heck was going on. You know, I had been, I had thought prices were going to be higher in July. So, you know, oops. And, and, and in addition to that, you know, we had a big futures premium. Ash came in my office this morning. What'd you say? Uh, gosh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think here. I was pretty you said so up. much. I know you said so much. Basis works. Yeah. Basis I said, what, works. I go, what'd you say two months ago? Basis works. There you go. Yeah. But so what I'm trying to figure out is, you know, there was extra supply in the market during that time from Canadian producers because they were trying to get their inventory really low in front of a big increase in the tax rate first of August. So they offered, you know, they reduced their inventory. It's probably end of July, Canadian mills had the lowest mill inventory that they've ever had in the history of the world. Um, and, you know, now we and, we're, and as we go forward now, we know we have permanent curtailments, partial curtailments, quiet quitting. You know, we're going to make a lot less lumber between now and the end of the year. My question is, have we cut more wood than end-use consumption? And if the answer is yes, then we're going to be 
we're going to be a, a, a grinding pull-up market all the way through the end of the year, maybe with a couple of air pockets, you know, during that October, November time where the seasonality. But, you know, if I go with the assumption that end users and intermediaries have like a medium at best and maybe on a smaller size inventory, which would be consistent with, Mad at being asked to change cars to trucks, guys needing trucks delivered, you know, tomorrow. People fought, people calling on stuff that we just booked on Thursday and Friday when, when it's going to ship, you know, 800 miles. Oh, I, I mean, I, I know I'm like Tuesday morning. I'm going to have a list of like trucks that are due next week. Uh, do you have an ETA on these? That I, I put nine, that I put nine, nine shipment on when I took them. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So, I mean, we can't, I mean, Matt, are we the only ones busy out here? I don't, no. I, don't, I don't think so. I think there's like any good trading market, you're going to have differences of opinion. You're going to have some regions that are slower and some regions that are hot, you know, hotter, but the general direction of things is in the cash market. I should say here, let me clarify is good. It's, it's a good solid trading market. Uh, there's some mills that want to move some things, not everything, just some things. And if you're a veteran trader or, or a guy that's looking to become a veteran trader, that's the kind of stuff you want to seek out. And then you want to turn around and, and go marry that up with a willing customer, right? Cause there's yeah. your inventory is more valuable today than it was 30 days ago. Let's talk about futures. It, it take a, it, it's, it's showing a lot of volatility. It finally found a bit of a small support group here today, but it spent three days just getting its teeth kicked in. Why is that? I have a theory, but I'm kind of curious what you guys think. Basis, uh, basis works. Basis works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> basis works. Well, I mean, so if you think about it, and you, if you if you base one of the bigs, uh, so we're the basis is now, I don't know, probably. We're at even money. At, we're at even at, money. Even, mon maybe at even money. Six inch basis is in huge. Obviously, if you're trading Southern Yellow Pine on a basis, I'm so, I'm sorry to hear that. It's not, that's not in yet, <laughs> but one of the things I saw open interest was up 200 the other day, open interest kind of flailed around while we rolled this week. But I think, Matt, I mean, my thought is we pull back and I mean, I was asking Greg this morning in the office, you know, he threw the number for 60 to 470, we could go back to while cash stays strong. And, uh, Gosh, I hope it wants to do that. That would if be if it does that. I great. think you would just shut your eyes and and buy, 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 right? Like the Jim Cramer, hit the button, buy, buy, buy. <laughs> I um, think you'd have to look at it on, on basis stuff you have on. For sure, I would just, I mean, blindly buy four sixty four seventy. It's a loser for the mills, and I think that that's the kind of number that we should all be targeting as buyers. And then when the market goes above five forty, we should all be looking at it as a sawmill and saying, "Hey, I, I like that business," you know. I think that's a you know five forty five sixty five eighty. Those are the kind of numbers that attract my attention if I'm a producer and I can sell forward at those types of prices. It, it look at the here's Greg was saying this the other day. If you think about it, the big the big group in there now, the largest holders of a position are industry longs, right? And they have been. They didn't liquidate like some of the fund shorts have been. And the fun shorts liquidating didn't really drive it that high to give them any any safe harbor, right? So there's a lot of long industries in there that have, what do you think, Greg, been long since March, April, you were saying, and have rolled a couple times and have taken two hickeys on that and are probably sitting there going, oh, gosh. Longs, like you said, it was uh, you were you're in Montreal in, in, was it April? April. April. And, you know, from then on, industry longs increased – and they rolled from May to July. They rolled from July to September. And, you know, those were both negative rolls. I mean, if you, so yeah, that's going to be the real question, Matt, you know, and it, it, it kind of gets to this whole point of, you know, what kind of demand do we have between now and the end of the year? I found it really interesting is, and Brian Westbury brought this up. He was, he was on C, he was on, uh, I think he was on Varney and Varney and he said, Hey, think about it. If you're a first time home buyer 
and there's somebody says, hey, I'm going to give you twenty five thousand dollars. Are you going to rush out and decide that, oh, I better do I better do that now? Or are you going to wait, see if you're going to get that? Yeah. Or so, are you going to that having that carrot out there could potentially mitigate some people making the decision, even with low, lower interest rates. Or are and you gonna... the real the real irony I found was when hey California is going to give people of uh, I mean I th- I, we need the detail I gotta look at one fifty hundred and fifty grand <laughs> well so it passed it passed the but it passed the, the Senate yeah Senate they signed it. in in is it the Senate in California I don't yeah, know what it that's is what they call it but why not just keep so, printing yeah, money wildly and doing that to give undocumented migrants eligible for 150 in state supported home loans what if you're a poor kid that just graduated high school and you're working at mcdonald's matt you're sounding too logical here that's, i'm just uh, curious i'm just like going can like, an 18 year old kid with a high school degree get, why that? doesn't everybody get that why can't uh-huh. every person in california that wants to buy a home get one hundred and fifty thousand dollars? i think we should call them and talk to them we should lobby for that we should get him on the show to uh, to explain this new math to us. I don't uh, get it. But as far as going back to the futures thing, I think the industry long thing and the role of the uh, of the funds, they had an opportunity to sell the board at what? What, what was the high? 535? 35, 38? I yeah. can't remember. What was that around there? And they didn't do it. Because they were all banking on the on the strike, like we talked about this so many times. The rail strikes don't really you can't run your business based on the CN or CP striking. You just gotta. For, it doesn't really matter. It might tension things up a little bit, but as far as trading futures versus cash and using that as a basis trade or or a way to scalp money real quick, you can't do it that way. You just can't rely on rail strikes in, in our combined hundred years of experience. How many times has a rail strike really meant anything to the market for more nothing? Than they settle all 72 the time. hours, right? So I'm sure that there's people in our industry that, that got along the board and then didn't sell the fact when they sent them back to work like a day later and they're still long and they're, they're unfortunately for them, they're going to, they're going to take a loss. So do you think any – okay, that's on the future side. Do you think anybody bought a, the extra truck because of a rail strike? No. I don't think so. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll – Nobody in this country is building inventory, Ashley. They've all been instructed by their bosses to keep inventory low or medium for the rest of the year. And they, here's another one. I learned this while I was down in Phoenix. I was talking to a, a friend of mine in the lumber business, and and uh, he said that you know they're – they're shipping about 20% less than they were shipping last year at this time and that the houses are smaller. Yeah. And so, you know, if you think demand is going to radically increase here over the next four to six months, well, let's just say through the end of the year, probably not. You know, I mean, in the short term, demand's going to remain good. We're in that shoulder season. Weather's pretty good across the country. It's so warm out. There's plenty of daylight. This is the time when people get busy starting new homes and finishing up old homes and getting paid for it. Then when we get into the winter time, people start looking forward to 2025. And so you start to get into that Thanksgiving through Christmas time period where you just get some speculation and guys will build some inventory. But between now and then, we're just in the cash market. You know, what's the and season, the, when's a when's a, when's a normal seasonal low in lumber prices? October, November. Third week in October. For seven, out of ten, seven out of ten years, third week in October. Sometimes it's as early it's, it's as early as the last week in September. Yeah. Sometimes it goes all the way until the first week in December. Right. But you know, it's in that region. And it was kind of I talked about this last week. Is I believe we hit a cycle low when Ashley called the bottom. Have I said that enough times yet? Yeah, it's starting to get embarrassing. Is it, are you embarrassed yet? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> when Ashley know, called man. the bottom in mid July. That was that I call that that's a cycle low, you know, and so, you know, we've had a rally off of that. And, you know, the question is, you know, do we start to adjust? You know, I mean, we need to stop going up before we can go down. You know, <laughs> does that this week, next week, three weeks from now? You know, a lot depends on that whole supply demand equilibrium that I alluded to earlier. But 
Uh, no matter what happens, somewhere we're going to have, an, somewhere between now and the end of the year, we will have an adjustment back in price. I think all of our beliefs is that it will not go to the July low. It will go somewhere short of that. You know, Matt's 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 going to load the boat up thirty bucks in front of that. He's probably he may not be the only one, right? Yeah, um, I look. I'll go as far as to say I think nobody nobody bought extra for because of a strike. But I will say I think some people after the strike decide to either buy less or short the market is what I'm seeing because they. That that's what I'm feeling. That's why I still think we're going. And back to your thing, Greg. You can you can pick the bottom, and you can pick your friends, but you can't pick your friend's bottom. Is what I've always been told. <laughs> well, and you know, you only buy the bottom by accident. You know, if you buy every day, you're going to buy the bottom. Mm-hmm. So, um, Greg, I heard that's your motto. If you buy every day, then you know, eventually, you're going to be right. Buy every single day. Buy something. <laughs> but the rarely day goes by that I don't that I don't buy something. Rarely. Wasn't there a, a rap song like that that said buy lumber every day? Or that was smoke something every day, I think. <laughs> All right. So uh what inning are we in right now then? We Greg, I think we both said three. Matt, you said five four to, to five. S- I don't know, five to seven, let's say. I, I think the market's gonna remain good on the cash side here for the foreseeable future into mid to late September. I really do. And it, you know, it could surprise people with even more sticking power if demand stays where it is right now. I'm seeing pretty good, healthy demand here. It's and a, it's, uh, you know, like it, like it, putting your finger on that where equilibrium is is a real key to it right here. Is you know, have we cut enough to shift the balance? You know, and then you overlay that with you know accumulation and distribution of inventory. So it yeah. appears like it, if you I, just take a glance at random lengths there, Greg. As an, as, as an observer, it appears as though the Western mills and the Eastern mills that produce white wood, spruce, hemp fir, white fir, uh, and, and the Doug fir, both green and dry, have, have answered that question with yes. Yeah. And it, yeah. it appears as though yellow pine produces it that, that, that like to focus on two by six and two by eight. The answer is no, which will lead me into some other part of the discussion here later on. But, I mean, yellow pine is obviously the weak sister here. I don't know what's going to fix that because I'm not in that business, but I, it is something to observe. It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, again, not knowing a lot about pine, I'll know it enough. Obviously, they can move How do that. I not ga- know enough about something that's now like 50% of production. Well, we, I, think we, I think like, we do, but anytime I. Like, anytime that seems, I like, that seems like an error. Anytime I talk about it, I get a call and they're like, Son, you don't know what you're talking about up there. And uh, I'm like, hey, here, here's what I do know. A lot of investments got put in. People buy logs on the open market and buy all kinds of stuff, gets delivered in the gate, and they can push that out like the Play-Doh Fun Factory. If anybody's ever seen that, it was a great thing back in the 70s and 80s. What are you talking about? I still have one. You still got one? Oh, and, yeah, every day. And, <laughs> and it never ceases to amaze me how much they can produce. And they have obviously have not made enough decisions to rationalize any more capacity. But I'm guessing if you're sitting in those corporate boardrooms, you've probably already made decisions and have been looking and penciling out the highest cost producing ones and are probably trying to figure out what you're going to do about it. Unfortunately, that's what's going to happen and have to happen in the South. I don't think 10 years ago, people thought when they were investing, they'd ever be below the cost of production there, right? I have it on good authority that in the mid to low 200s, it's a big, big loser. So that's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah, when you're selling it for less than the cost of the uh, fiber, yeah, that that that's probably cash. That's probably shutdown loss. Hey, Matt, I want to circle back to something you said. Like in in Greg, you there's been so much consolidation. A lot of these buyers used to buy for independent yards that are buying now in these big corporate places, uh, and they have methodology theories, ninja black belt ways of buying stuff and looking at things. But you're right. It just feels like everybody is running it lean and the current distribution chain has allowed people to do that. Um, But what I see is, you know, we're part of that distribution chain, Matt, Greg, with our inventory. Our inventory is going down and probably is going to continue to go down for the next two to three months. So we're not going to be as much of that chain. We're going to we're going to have enough to keep distributing, but. We're not going to hold the inventory that we held probably for the last three or four months. Are you, Matt? 
No, not at all. I've no. I've talked about it on the show. Yeah. I have no interest in carrying the same volume inventory going into the slowest time of the year, the the lowest price point of the year in October, as Greg said. Also, after what I experienced in July, where I had I had to work my little tail off to to sell a bunch of inventory that was a loser and and stay afloat, right? So I mean, yeah. I was able to do that, and I was happy that that I I could pull that off, and I'm sure Greg was happy too, and you. But I don't need that kind of stress going into, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas and in a, in a brand new fiscal year. So I'm just going to yeah, keep my inventory. I, I looking at, it looks like our inventory is down 30 percent from what it was in mid-July and probably projected to be down another 30 percent by so end of September. And you know how that, that well, well they'll is. only be a, they'll only be a little bit above our like my, my top end of my inventory budget. I'm I'm half of what I was, and I'm gonna fight like hell to keep it half of what I was for the rest of the year, unless something changes. But I don't expect a big change one way or the other, and I'm perfectly comfortable to move my my volume of inventory that I'm that I'm at right now on a month to month basis. It's it's child's. I mean, play. I think if somebody's listening to us, he's going, wow, you guys are kind of really bearish. No, I'm not bearish at all. I'm just realistic. I mean, and... you, know, you know, I'm just saying is I think, you know, a guy would say, hey, you guys are really bearish. I'm just saying that's what I think. That's what I think. Listening like to me when I listen to me and, you know, to, to that point is Ashley had that, you know, big job. And it was like, I don't know, it was, it was a lot of trucks and he gave me the prices and, you know, and I went, oh, you know, those are, you know, kind of like today's market price, so a little bit lower, maybe blah, 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 blah. And I went, I walked down the hall and I came back and I go, if I had that as a firm, I'd take it. <laughs> yeah. You would have laid the risk off for that time frame, which is a hedge in its own way also. Right. Yeah. Wild cards, you know I mean? We're in supply push market. Um, wild cards are, have we cut enough supply is, Repair and remodeling going to be better. You know, it feels like all the housing data in the last the last month or so has all been a little bit more positive. Um, you know, my wild card still is: do we get in? Do we get any more bounce? Do we get some bounce back in multifamily between now and the end of the year, or is that all not until next year? So I was um, just I was just looking at Dustin from Fast Markets. He had something out on X, uh, and it was showing vacancy rates in his head. I got to look at it. Two by forecaster, two by forecaster is his handle. And it basically, he was kind of it looked like he was calling the bottom in multifamily. It looked like it had made it kind of made a turn. And, and numbers that we were looking at a month ago were kind of showing that on on the starts and permits, right? I'm going to have to dig into what he said, but let, that would be. It would seem like, you know, when you're the police with the under construction at record high and the high completions that it should cycle. Yeah. If, you know, first time buyers are going to wait until next year to see if they get free money. Um, they're gonna have to rent something. Well, the other side of that is there, if there's these expected rate cuts too, which is going to help first time buyers in the first half of next year. So, I mean, you got to look at next year is probably going to, if things remain the same as they are right now, a lot of optimism. I think there would be a lot of optimism going into 2025 and maybe there's a little bit of, um, a sneaky pull up in the third and fourth quarter of 2024 because of those higher expectations. I don't know. I'm not in the market prediction phase right now. I'm just in the right along the market phase. Like I, I'm letting the market tell me what to do and I'm going to respond accordingly. I mean, um, shouldn't you always, I'll make, shouldn't I'll you make always new do plans. that though? Shouldn't you always Sometimes I plan ahead. Sometimes I plan behind. And right now I've done all of my dirty work. I got rid of my, my inventory that I wanted to get rid of over the last 60 days and I've replaced that inventory with lower costed, better inventory. And I'm just going to use that inventory to ride through the rest of the year, replace as needed. I'm not going to buy extra. That's the only difference in, in the first half of 2024. If I had a big run on my inventory, I, I would have bought some extra, you know, knowing that uh, based on my expectations that I was talking about back in January, February last year, Going into the second half of the year, for me generally, I usually don't want to build inventory going towards November. I just, I don't know, maybe I've just learned that over the years, or maybe I'm just a curmudgeon, but that's how I operate things. Matt, what, um, and Greg, 
the the mills you're talking to right now, Matt, Pacific Northwest, Western Spruce, whoever else you talk to, and Greg in the Eastern Canadian side, what is the thought there? Are people taking counters on anything right now? I haven't seen that. I mean, are, are, what's, you know, I, I did have one mill today send me something. I've got these five cars I want to move today. And they were looking for an offer on that, but they were all odd, odd items, right? All oddball items a little bit. Are mills starting to crack anywhere that anybody sees? Because maybe I'm wrong on this whole thing. Are you, Matt? Are you seeing anything anywhere? No. I'm. I mean, you can, you can always negotiate a five or ten dollar deal with your friendly neighborhood sawmills that trust you and like you. Yeah. On something that they want to sell. The friendly five. Your job is to yeah. find out what it is they want to sell, right? Right. And then match you know, that like up right with now, something if it, if that your customer wants You know what? The price is firm on six-inch items pretty much across the board. The yeah. Nine-foot studs, you know what? You can trade nine-foot studs. There's right. there's softness there. And, you know, I hate saying this because, you know, I've got a bunch that I need to sell. So, you know, I'm going to have to get dirty on them because they're a little sloppy. You know, I mean, it is what it is. Matt, what about your your the the U.S. species items? How are they hanging in there? Just what I said. I just think that two before is the one that if you're going to trade and you're going to give your buddy a five or ten dollar friendly discount, it would be on two before. Yeah, and it would be on non two before sixteen, eighteen, and twenty because those are your prime lengths and they have real value. So if some guy comes in and and you know maybe you negotiate a slightly lower tally value and then the guy counters you another five bucks, you probably do that. But on two by six, Greg's right. And two by eight, Greg's right. Two by 10, Greg's right. Two by 12, Greg's right. Studs, two by four. All I, all I keep hearing is the, Greg's right. Matt. That, well, yeah, you're that's usually right, right, Greg. Greg. Right. So there you go. Two by four, eights, and nines, I think, are tradable, as Greg said. I don't think that's a real mystery or revelation. Two by six studs are pretty solid. You know, finger joints have regained their. I mean, they're up fifty to eighty dollars from from what we were trading them for in mid July, maybe even higher in some cases. But uh, yeah, basically the the deal would be if you're going to trade some stuff with somebody on a friendly basis, it's going to be either two before random with a non awesome tally or uh, some two before eights and nines and tens. That's so I've got an interesting observation on uh, euro that I've seen over the last two to three weeks. Um, Matt could call in two by four 16s on everything. I don't know, shit, a month ago. Thank you. Um, one thing with two by four 16s, pretty much every port, everybody's the same number now. And I got a call this week, last week, from probably six different people that I have, haven't have sold Euro to or have just sold a little. Hey, how many no grade stamp 16s do you have? Where are you at on regular 16s? And 16 footers, what's the low trade on those 420, 430, month and a half, two months ago? They're all, everybody's pretty much 500 now in all ports on 16s. There's not much wiggle room there. And people call me looking for studs in non Euro stuff because there's not a lot of Euro studs sitting around anywhere all on the coast. They want to know, you know, what does our mill have and select stuff? Oh, we usually buy. Euro, but we can't get it right now. So I'm seeing just a lot. I don't know if that's a precursor, just a lot less Euro sitting here. And especially on the 16s, when everybody's sitting at the same number, it's either a top or or there's not a lot sitting there, right? Right. So that was uh that was my thought there. You guys want to jump into Mary Date dump segment? Yeah. Sure. All right. Since I'm not ready, who wants to go first? I will. Go ahead, Matt. Greg likes to bat clean up. Uh, as far as Mary Dayton dump goes, I would say I am interested in marrying two by six and two by eight Southern Yellow Pine, even though I don't trade it. When I see those prices on print, I just I look at that as it's cheaper than low grade in Western species, and it, it just it makes no sense to me financially that that you can buy two by six number two Yellow Pine for. About the same as what you could buy two to six number three white wood for. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, it's just, it's. It, I wish Charles was around to, to to talk about that, but he's not. Maybe he would agree with me, but maybe he wouldn't. I don't know. I just, I see that as a as a as something I would bet some money on that is not going to stick around forever. 
And then as far as marrying things, I'm still into the marrying the cheap two before studs, if you can find them. And I noticed something interesting from, from print that there's a huge spread that has developed in the West. I'm not so sure this exists in the East between stud grade and number two. Uh, it's hmm. like $60. That's good. That's a great observation. Yeah. You're right on. It is. The days of Barbie selling uh, number two and stud grade at minus five or minus 10 are gone. And this, this kind of leads into another observation when, when uh, you look at print for Western dimension, some of the regions print standard better two before still. And that spread is also widened to a create. It's like standard better has become a glorified number three. And, and I think veteran traders or people that are willing to check into their local building codes should really pay attention to it. Can I use stud grade? Can I use standard better? And if the answer is yes, it's just green light, game on. Shut your eyes and buy as much of that stuff as you possibly can because there's not very many times in your career where you get these 50 and 60 and $70 head starts on grade. So anyhow, and then as far as stuff that I want to get divorced from, I don't really know that I have any one particular thing that's really obvious to me. I mean, 2 by 12 prices are really high across the board. I don't trade much 2 by 12 and I know there's not much 2 by 12 being produced, but if the mills can ever figure out how to find bigger logs, you'd want to be running, not walking away from that trade. Um, and I just, I guess I would just leave it at that. I'd also, I mean, I, I think buying 2 by 4 random 2 and better lumber and selling 2 by 6 2 and better lumber would be a good trade. I don't, that's not to me something I want to divorce, though. It's just a good basis. So oh, I like that. For, forward price, but some sell, forward selling some uh, two by six. I mean, you don't have to use the board as your hedge. You can also use the cash market as your hedge. And, and if yeah. you want to, if you want to look at it that that way, you can. Yeah, hundred dollars spread get, between if, the two. If you can get the length on the trade, sure. I, I like it. That's that's great. All right. Uh, so my Mary, since. I don't know whether I'm smart or stupid right now in this market is two by four sixteens. I'm going to stick with that. And that basis keeps pretty solid. It should continue to move out. It's a pretty steady one right now. I'm, I'm not looking at taking any marrying anything crazy. I want to, uh, I want to stay with, with that one. Cause it just seems like it, ju it just seems that's right for this point in my life. Date. Two by four, 92 and five eighths. And I put, listen to you two, Matt, number two. Two by six, 92 and five eighths, number two. Two by four, 116 and five eighths, number two. And two by four, 10 foot, number two. And dump anything in two by six, two by eight euro that I've got sitting on the port. And two by four, 12, no grade stamp. And if you buy some two by six and two by eight from me, you may accidentally get some two by four, no grade stamp on that truck. Those would be 12 footers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking for someone to be a hero and clean up like eight to 10 trucks of two by four, 12 foot, no grade stamp in Port Canaveral, Florida. All of our listeners out there, we're going to have a special drawing for the person that buys the most trucks of those. I haven't decided yet what, but I trust me, it'll be special. You're going to get the ping pong balls out and have a little uh, lottery. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what do you got, Greg? I won't, I'm not going to diss you. I'm not going to diss you this week. Yeah, so well, yeah, I mean, I'm married. I mean, you know, two by four sixteens. You know, we talked about this for. We've been talking about it for for a couple of months. I mean, they were incredibly undervalued. You know, they've risen up. You know, seventy five, eighty dollars, and the basis has come in probably one hundred and twenty five. So, I mean, against my worst trades, I'm maybe even now. So that's nice. But I, you know, I looked in the first half of the year, it, European imports. From the top 10 shippers, we're down 19%. What, what do you think the second half of the year is going to look like? More or less? Well, it feel, it, what I'm seeing right now, it certainly feels like more. Or the yeah. shipments will be less. Yeah, shipments, yeah, shipments going, will be less. Gonna, more there's, more, there's, more, there's more taken away. Less. Yes. There's I mean, more. it's it's we're already seeing it. Right. I mean, and you know, to, Matt, to Matt's point, I mean, we're – we could probably forward sell for Q4 two by six sixteens, you know, fifty dollars below today's market for anybody that's interested. I mean, you know, European producers are going to send more two by six sixteens in October, November, 
than, than are available in the marketplace right now. That spread's going to come together. Matt, you highlighted probably one of the best trades that exists right now. And to your point, you know, whether you buy the board or you do it on a cash trade, that's a great trade if you get enough time, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is the kind of deal where, you know, it's going to be a great trade. It's going to work if you get enough time. Sure. Um, you know, Mary, I am still married to MSR Spruce, and that continues to be a really good relationship, um, particularly on the higher grade. We're continuing to see relative strength, as we should, between now and late October. Um, that relative va- that relative strength is only going to continue. And we are I already, already, already said the thing that we're dumping is that the 12 foot no grade stamp. I th- think as you sold all the 16s. Um, there may be a few trucks of 14s, you know, that we we'll, we'll throw in as a spiff. There you go. Well, gosh, it's crazy. We're almost 43 minutes into it. Matt, seems like we, seems like we just got going. Seems yeah, like we just got gonna, going. Uh, politics. Or, I just want to share one more thing. Is I had one of my first fantasy football drafts last night, and. I looked at the time. I go, oh, yeah, that's fine. And then I went, oh, wow, that's the East Coast time. That's way too late for me. So I, I had to leave it on auto draft, and uh, I got my rating. I, I was a C. I was my, my draft was rated as a C. So And to add insult to injury, I got Jordan Love as my quarterback. As oh, a Bears fan. This, oh man, that's going to be a good pick. That's like, I mean, I, I, I'm, I gotta have to, I'm gonna have to throw out trade bait here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. I, mean, that, I can't uh, be rooting for. I can't be. I can't be rooting for Packers. Come on. Who is the new Chicago it. QB? <laughs> I guess see who has Cam. I'll trade straight up. I'll give you Jordan. Who's the new I guy? Think, I think people would like. They, 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 they throw themselves all over that. No, seriously. Greg, who's the new guy? The new guy in, in Chicago. Who did they get? Who did we get rid of? Who the, we got? The first round pick. What? Oh, Caleb Williams. Yeah, you need you need to go trade for him. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go. That's you know, funny. I, I'm gonna see if I can get a running back or a wide receiver also. But you know, <laughs> I gotta see who's got him. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Players league. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> are we going to do a section on on DraftKings next week? I, I think we. Should, I mean, listen, the Kelsey, Kelsey, and Kelsey got a hundred million. I think. Well, we you know, it. they're a little Come bit on. more accomplished than we are. They've got Super Bowl rings. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. He's also Mrs. Taylor Swift. To <sighs> that. All right, boys. All right, guys. Well, appreciate good, it. Uh, good to have you back. Good. We got a short week next week. Boy, we'll have to figure out something special for Wednesday next week with, with only one day, huh? There we go. Uh, we'll we'll figure it out. You guys All have right, a guys. great one. All right, boys. Have a, have a great one. night. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Lumber Word. The Lumber Word podcast is dedicated to engaging conversations about the lumber industry, including trading ideas, market trends, and evaluations of overvalued and undervalued assets. We wish to emphasize that the discussions and opinions expressed in this podcast are purely for informational and entertainment purposes. They should not be considered as financial or investment advice. We encourage our listeners to make their own financial decisions, taking into account their unique circumstances and financial goals, and to seek professional financial advice if necessary.